Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 This morning, the Lord was dealing with me with the term gratitude. And the definition of gratitude says the quality of being thankful. The quality of being thankful. It also is defined as a readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. So I want to ask you a question on this morning. Has God been kind to you this week? Has God been kind to you this week? Well, seeing your faces here today lets me know that he's been kind to you because he didn't have to let you live, but he did. Has God been kind to you on this week? Did God deliver you out of a hard circumstance? He's been kind to you this week. And because he's been kind to you, let's take this moment to return a small measure of the kindness he has given to us. So if you're able to just stand to your feet, if you're able to stand to your feet and begin to put your hands together and begin to open your mouth and begin to tell them thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Because you didn't have to do it, Lord, but you saw fit. And so, Lord, we thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Now, can you, can you number the days? If, if you had a calculator and were to just calculate how many years you've been here, by 365, um, most of you would have numbers that would be hard to comprehend. But each and every day God has kept you is a blessing, amen? So thank him. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On behalf of Pastor Dwayne S. McNair Sr., along with First Lady McNair, let's give them a hand. And the entire Better Life Church family, we welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience. To all the members and visitors in attendance in the sanctuary, as well as those who are worshiping with us via Facebook Live and YouTube. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can join us live and in person every Sunday morning here at 2101 Atlantic Avenue in Chesapeake, Virginia. We know when it comes to cooking, preparing the ingredients is important. And there is no greater ingredient for a successful worship service than prayer. Amen. So at 1130 a.m. every Sunday morning, our doors open and overseer Tony McNair Sr. and the prayer warriors prep our worship experience through prayer. Let's give him a hand. Hallelujah. Then at 11.45 a.m., we are off and running. Then at 6 p.m. Sunday evenings, join us for what many have described as the best school in all of the land. Somebody say Sunday school. Sunday school every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. via the GoToMeeting app. Our pastor has equipped the leadership here to lead us in the further studying of the Word of God. And the great thing is, it's not a one-sided affair. We allow for virtual class participation. So whether you want to just sit back and take in the lesson, or if you like to give your observations and perspectives, please join us for Sunday School via the GoToMeeting app. Then every Wednesday at 7 p.m., join us via the GoToMeeting app for prayer and Bible study. Our pastor is leading us in the study of spiritual gifts currently. And church, have we not had some dynamite presenters thus far? Have we not had some dynamite presenters for our Bible study thus far? Come on, you can do a little better than that. Come on. So join us Wednesday as we continue our study of spiritual gifts. And finally, on Fridays, join us for noonday prayer. Noonday begins at what time? 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. The prayer warriors lead us in prayer as well as words of inspiration. Amen. And this is also via the GoToMeeting app. With that said, saints, it's offering time. The ways to give are going to be showing up on the screen for those of you who uh, are watching us via Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, you can give via Cash App, via PayPal, via Givelify, or of course in person here at the church. And I can't read what's up there, so if there's another app to use, it's, it's up there too, amen? The Bible informs us that when we give, God gives back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And the example that comes to my mind when I think about this is when you do laundry, when you put it in, it goes in one way, but when you take it out of the washer, put it in a dryer, and apply your fabric softener and your dryer sheets, once you put it back in a basket, everything is so much more fluffy and taking up so much more space that before you know it, you're trying to push and keep everything in from falling out. And that is how God blesses us. He honors your gift. He honors your sacrifice. And so when you sow into him, into his work, he sows right back into you, amen? Whether it be through good health, or whether it be with peace of mind, which cannot be given a price, God always rewards a cheerful giver. Amen? So, if all hearts are clear, let us stand and pray as we prepare to give to God our sacrifices. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, Lord, we thank you First for this day, O oh God, which is a gift in itself that you allowed us to awaken and to see. And Lord, we thank you for the provision that you have allotted to each and every one of us, O oh God. We take it not for granted. Now, Lord, with a cheerful heart, we come before you to present to you our gifts by way of our tithes and our offerings. 
And we ask, oh God, that you will take these gifts, that you will multiply them for the benefit of your kingdom, and that you will bless the sower as they sow into your kingdom work. And it's in the precious and mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. And come, let us present our gifts. another song I was going to do right there, but hey, you, the, the wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. At this time, let us stand as we are led in our invocation by Brother Dwayne McNair III. Following him will be our scripture by Sister Jordan J. Say amen as they come. Good afternoon, church. I ask that you bow your head as we pray. Oh, Lord, we come to you today giving thanks, oh, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh, Lord. We thank you for the activity of our limbs, oh, Lord. We thank you for our sight, for our hearing, oh, Lord. We thank you, oh, Lord, for us coming together, oh, Lord. Thank you for everybody here, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray for everybody that was not able to be here, oh, Lord. Pray for everybody that is in their homes right now sick, oh, Lord. I pray for everybody, O oh Lord, that is in the hospital, O oh Lord, fighting for their lives, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray for them, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray for the people that have lost their way, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray for the people that have no home, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray for everybody that is out fighting for our country, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray for everybody that wants that wants you and needs you, but does not know how to get you, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray that somebody today comes into the church looking for you, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, amen. Good morning, church. I said good morning, church. Today I will be reading from Isaiah chapter 41, verses 9 through 10. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men, thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The Lord's word is blessed. seated or you may choose to remain standing as we go into our praise and worship part of our service. Amen. Amen. God created us for the purpose, for the specific purpose to give him praise. So that's what we come to do on this morning 
And after the praise and worship has concluded, I will ask that you will stand to your feet as we receive our bread of life for this morning from Pastor Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Better Life. Hallelujah. So happy to see all of you. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. I am so happy that you are here with us on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that we serve a great God? We serve an awesome God, and he is worthy to be praised. He deserves all of our praise. Hallelujah. We owe him a praise. We owe him our life. We owe him everything. On this morning, I'm going to, uh, we are going to lead you into praise and worship. But first, we need to have a little choir rehearsal. If you all could just repeat after me, because we're going to be the Better Life Mass Choir this morning. Is that all right? All right. So yeah, if you could say, one Lord, one, Lord, one, faith, one faith, we've come, we've come to, praise you, praise you. to praise you, praise you. One Lord, one, Lord, one faith. We've come, We've come to praise you, praise you. Praise you praise All right, I think the choir is ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. One Lord, yeah. One Lord. One faith. One faith. We've come. We've come to praise you, praise you. Praise you, praise Clapping you. Our hands, Clapping our hands. Lifting our voice. Lifting our voice. Said we've come, we've come to praise you, praise you. Praise you, praise you. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. We've come, we've come to praise you, praise you. Praise you. Yeah. 
our friend. He is our father. Hallelujah. And he is mighty. Hallelujah. Lord, you're mighty. Hallelujah. Lord, you are mighty. Lord, you are mighty. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being a mighty God. Please join in with us as we sing, Lord, you're mighty. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. This is a mighty God. Hallelujah. This is a mighty God. Mighty God. To allow his son. Hallelujah. To be sacrificed for the redemption of Hallelujah. all mankind. It took a mighty God to save that wayward family member of yours. And let's personalize it. It took a mighty God Hallelujah. to save you and me. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a mighty God. Bless your name, Jesus. We serve a mighty God. Bless your name, Jesus. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then sings my soul, my Savior God.
think about where he brought me from. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, a sacred take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin oh when Christ shall come with shout of adoration and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim and then proclaim and then proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my sins dear God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul. said yes hallelujah yes oh yes oh yes 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 hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 We praise the name of the Lord because he's so good and so kind and so merciful. Heavenly Father, we thank you today because this is the hour that you have given us where there is a word from the Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for this opportunity to stand at this sacred desk one more time. God, we pray your richest blessings upon your people that their eyes may be 
clearer, their ears may be more open, and that you will bless them, give them the food that they need for such a time as this. And we will be careful to give thy name the praise. The glory and honor shall be thine. Because we know you're not through blessing us. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. While you remain standing, our scriptural text comes from the Old Testament writing Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. We're going to read three verses, attempt to read three verses coming from that division. Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. Hallelujah. Beginning at the sixth verse and ending at the ninth verse. Amen. Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 9. If you have it, say amen. amen. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee, chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not see his love, set his love, excuse me, upon you, nor chosen you, because you were more in number than any other, any people. For ye were the fewest of them all. But God, but because the Lord love you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondsmen from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt know ye therefore that the Lord by God thy God is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. You may be seated. May the Lord bless the hearers, doers, and readers of his word. Today I would like to talk from the theme God is faithful. God is faithful. And because God is faithful, we are protected by God. We are protected by his word. We are protected by his love. And we are protected from and through the sacrifice that he made on the cross. God is. God is faithful. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 gives us uh, a climax of what uh, Moses is writing here in the fifth book of the Pentateuch uh, from a theological standpoint. Uh, Moses was the writer of the five first original books of the Bible. We call them the Pentateuch. Uh, and in verse 9, we find that he is speaking to the children of Egypt. He tells them uh, that 
our God is faithful. God is, he is God, and he is faithful. He's a God that keeps covenant. He's a promise keeper. If God said it, somebody said, you don't have to believe it, that settles it. Amen. Years ago, the Clark sisters used to sing a song, I expect a miracle. I believe in the impossible. I see the invisible. And they kept right on saying, I am expecting what God said he would do. Deuteronomy tells us that God is faithful to his word. He's a covenant keeper with them that love him. Amen. There are stipulations here in this text. I was reading some of the commentary from the uh, Life, the Spirit-Filled Bible, Life in the Spirit Study Bible, and uh, one of the things that the author points out here, particularly in verse 3, uh, he kind of gives us a prelogue, and when you go back and get time to study, you can read this entire uh, verse chapter, chapter here where God uh, uh, will defeat the nations. Here is the context of what he's talking about. But I thank God because the word of God applies to us. Uh, this is not what we call predated material. This is material that God has given us to be blessed by. And as we study the word, we find just how powerful God's word is. He picks up in verse 3. He says, be careful who you marry because I'm getting ready to bless you. I'm getting ready to give you something unusual. If you remember in the text, he said that uh, the Lord thy God has delivered us and that we are a people that are chosen, especially out of the hands of God. Uh, Levi, the writer of the book of Matthew, we call him Matthew, uh, wrote uh, that when it comes to salvation, we did not save ourselves, but God called us out. And that is my prayer every single day of my life for those who I pray for, for my children, for my grandchildren, for the members of this church, for those who are lost, that God will call them out, that he will call them out of darkness into the marvelous light. It talks about intimate associations with people of the world. Romans tells us to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. He, call, he talks about intimate relations will eventually destroy the separateness and the holiness of God's people. Early on, God made particularly targeted some of the things that he wanted us to be sanctified from. Such matters of intimate marriage of God's people with unbelievers or partnership with unbelievers may turn believers away from God. The New Testament text tells us that we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It's a hard thing especially in a relationship, a marital relationship, to be unequally yoked because you might want to go one way and they might want to go another way. You might want to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and they may not want to love God that much. You don't need to be in a relationship that will, draw, that will cause you to give in. Hallelujah. And I know, and I was joking the other day, I, I, and, and, and um, First Lady, please forgive me, but I'm not going to mess with you today. <laughs> I don't have much. I was, I, was, I was carrying on, I was in a situation the other day, and, and I watched how some uh, wives abuse their husbands. And I said, Lord, I thank God, and you can't really say this literally, because she will flip you up like pancakes and throw you down. That I wear the pants in the house. And, and I had an elder, I love him to death, he's a good man of God, uh, when he was ch challenged in his early days of marriage. Uh, 
and uh, he came to me for counseling. He said, I told my wife, I wear the pants in the house. He says, I can't sleep. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't do that. Because I said, brother, don't you ever tell your wife that you are in charge. Because she's going to show you just who is in charge. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Y'all not with me today. Mm, mm, mm. But be careful, be careful. Make up in your mind, uh, you know, uh, one of the things when they, when they say a, a man is called to be a bishop, they said he has to be, I don't know why I'm going this way, he has to be in control of his own house. Because if he doesn't control his house out of love, not out of authority, you know, we're not talking about a, a, a husband that's an authority in the house. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us that we were all at one point or another give in to each other. But when, and when the faith in the face of God, the male factor is responsible for that entire family. Hallelujah. You know, I, I didn't marry a weak woman. And sometimes in my life and in my journey, I got into struggles with her. And, and I, was, I was ready, Sister Keish, First Lady, to throw in the towel. And she turned and looked at me. She said, you the man. <laughs> Lord. And I straight, ever since then, I've been right. Lord, have mercy. I asked the Lord to give me strength for my day. Hallelujah. God is faithful. I was looking at some things in this text, and and. In my, my, actual, uh, my actual text that we are looking at today was the last thing that God gave me. Because when I looked at my points that I want to talk about today, Sister Carolyn, when I looked at my points, I said, now, what would better describe or go along with these points that I'm making? The Lord led me to Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keeps his commandment to a thousand generations. If you average up a generation, let's say, just to be conservative, 15 years per generation, every 15 years a new generation is born within that family set. Now multiply that by a thousand. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That goes beyond even us today. It's important for us to remember as I look at this text, mercy with them that love him, God chose. God's choice of Israel was uh, motivated by his love. Not but by what they did, but it was motivated by his love for them. Moreover, God promised faithfully to keep his covenant and show mercy to generations after generations of them that love him and keep his commandment. You don't have anything to worry about if you keep on keeping God's commandment. David said in Psalms 109, I love his commandments. I love his precepts and his statutes. David said, I love God, hallelujah. And that's why he was noted as one of the men after God's own heart. Not only was God's love contingent upon this response of love, remember that loving God is contingent upon you loving him and he loving you and obeying him and he obeying and keeping his covenant. But also, their prosperity is tied up in our love for God. Have you ever seen a time like this? I mean, if we have historians in the room, this season takes the cake. Lord have mercy. Famine after famine, situation after situation, sickness after sickness, death after death, war after war, things out of after things, so much is going on in our world. But God's love is greater than what's going on in this world. I am not going to be sometimes up and sometimes down, almost level 
to the ground. I'm going to be faithful to the end. Hallelujah. You can put on my tombstone, faithful to the end. I'm going all the way, hallelujah, with the Lord. I'm not going to be unfaithful to God because God is faithful to me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to turn my back on God or to unguard, leave my heart unguarded because if I keep my heart guarded, then I will find out sooner or later. I'd rather trust God in the dark anytime than to trust the devil in the dark because the devil will take us to darkness. Hallelujah. I had an assignment on yesterday or day before yesterday, and I forgot that assignment. And I was out for dinner on last night and went to dinner and did something I've never done. Went straight back home and laid down and, and prayed over this message that the Lord had given me. And I prayed over it, and God gave it to me sooner this week than he normally talks to me. And that's why when I left the house this morning, I left the house, and my message was on my computer. And I had to ask my son, and he told his son, go get that message so the pastor won't have to shoot from the hip. That's how important it is. The devil try to keep you from getting this blessing on today. The devil tried to keep me from getting this blessing on today. Through the faithfulness of God, we are protected by God, and in his protection, we can see three things that is necessary for us to embrace. Number one, we must embrace the fact that we are covered by the blood. Mm, mm, mm. We must embrace the fact that when we call upon his name, we are blessed. And then finally, we are empowered by his spirit. Covered by the blood, calling on his name, and in being empowered by his spirit. When we look at the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ, wherever you go, whatever you do, make sure that you are covered by the blood. Hallelujah. When we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, we are clothed with the power of God. But one thing I like about the power of God, I, was one, I went to a chicken store the other day and they said preachers like chicken. Lord have mercy. Well, this chicken was chicken. It was chi the chicken was chicken. Lord have mercy. And you know how some people cook chicken and when they get to the breast, the breast is not an easy thing to cook. Because if you don't cook it right, it'd be dry all, Sister Dr. Karen, it'd be dry all on the inside. But this chicken was chicken all over. Lord have mercy. It was juicy all the way through. Lord have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. Wherever you go, whatever you do, make sure that you are covered by the blood. Make sure that you are covered, not just on the outside, uh -huh. but that you are coated, not just coated on the outside, but covered on the inside. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. It's a difference between a coated, coated gold watch than an actual gold watch. Lord have mercy. I want, when it comes to my, my, my being covered by the blood, I want to be chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, I want it to come all the way through so that I can have it from the inside out. Hallelujah. God can move in me from the inside out. It's coming out of me. Some people go to church and they look churchy. Hallelujah. But when they leave the church, they act like the devil, Lord, because they don't have that, that coating on the inside. Oh, Jesus. That's why in the Pentecostal church, when we baptize, we take them down. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We don't sprinkle them. We want to, you, you know, some, some of us got so much in us, and I'm not going to say devil. I mean, uh, some of us got so much in us that when we get baptized, we need to go down 
and the preacher needs to say, hold them. Hold them. Hold them until you start seeing the bubbles come up. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. When you go down, you're just completely immersed in the Holy Spirit. Covered on the inside and not just coated. Baptized and filled to the point where you, are, you have an overflow feeling. It's overflowing in you. And when it's overflowing, the devil can't get to it. The devil can't speak to your mind. He cannot get in your head because you are covered by the blood. There are no restrictions. There are no age benchmarks. Once you acknowledge Christ, and, and some, some people are going to do this. I remember driving to Buchanan, uh, Virginia for about a year as a child when my father was pastoring in Buchanan, not too far from Lynchburg. Today, I believe Elder Leon Taylor is the pastor of that church. And, and, and we used to sing a song that I never would ever forget. We would leave, take that five hour drive, have Sunday school, I think, morning worship, and then back at six or seven o'clock for the evening service. And we used to, sing, and then drive five hours back home every Sunday. Hallelujah. He was definitely a servant of the Most High God. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. We used to sing the song, if you tried every, yeah, ragged car. Hallelujah. One of those cars caught on fire while we were in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I don't, won't forget it. And, and, and when we got in the mountains, the car was smoking like somebody was, like they do today when they're driving down the street and they're smoking those things, those, what you call those things, those vapors. And I said, my God, the car's on fire. Smoke coming from everywhere. <laughs> and they just in the car vaping. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But this car was vaping. Had all of his children in the car, his wife in the car, headed to do what the Lord had appointed and assigned him to do. And then we discovered that in the back, because the engine, I believe, in that car was in the back of the car. That somebody left a rag in the car, and the rag caught on fire. And see, that's why you gotta be, that's why you gotta be careful with the devil because if you get close enough to him, he might spark you. <laughs> and then you find yourself following him. The songwriter said, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire burning with the Holy Ghost. Lord have mercy. The work of Christ, I'm taking too long on this point, that he did on the cross gives this kind of covering. Wherever you go, whatever you do, wherever you get to, and I was talking about this song, trying to talk about this song that we sang at uh, the church in Buchanan. It says, if you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. You need a helping hand, somewhere to stand, try Jesus. And we used to sing that song till it got into our spirit. But let me, let me tell you something, young people. You don't have to try everything. You can take the shortcut. <laughs> because Jesus paid it all. You don't have to go through some of these things that other young people are going through. You just got to have a made up, made up mind. The scripture says that you are chosen by God. And all you got to do is love him. Hallelujah. And he will open up the king kingdom of heaven for you. After the same manner, the Lord is taking me too much time on this point. Also he took the cup, 1 Corinthians 11 and 25. And when he had supped, saying, this is my cup, the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. What is he saying in the New Testament? This is the Christian covenant. Lord have mercy. This is the new standard. This is a better way. Hallelujah. The old way was all right 
you know, but you don't have to live under the law. You can live under the grace of God because it's the new covenant, it's the new testament, and it's the better way. It's the best way. So when you get yourself in a situation because we are challenged, we are, we are challenged on every hand, everybody's trying to sell themselves or their agenda or their own beliefs, but we as Christians in God's world need to sell and evangelize the word of God. We all must have a personal and a collective relationship with God. That's where we mess up. We mess up saying that, okay, I have a personal relationship with God, but we are, and we're studying this, the gifts of the church, we are the body of Christ. We are to grow in Christ together and not by ourselves. I heard John Maxwell as I was listening to him on last night, early morning, I had an assignment and I missed the assignment so I had to drive to Hampton last night about 1.30 in the morning. I got to Hampton about 1.30 in the morning, finished my assignment. But while I was going to Hampton because if many of people know about where I live, I'm only like 10 minutes from the Monitor Merrimack Bridge. But I noticed there was an array of cars coming southbound. I was headed northbound. So as I saw the cars, I say, why are all of these people up this time in the morning? <laughs> Lord have mercy. They were doing road work, and every now and then they would let cars go through. So I said, I'm going to go through the other tunnel. But as I began to travel, and I came down 64 and uh, had to stop and get some gas because I didn't want to do it this morning, and uh, drove down Greenbrier Parkway to the Wawa to get some gas and came out. The club was full at 1.30, quarter to two in the morning. I don't know if some of them made the eight o'clock service or not, but some people do. <laughs> the club had, I know over a hundred cars there. And, and whoever the manager of Taco Bell was smart, I, I guess that's what we as evangelists need to do. We need to be out there one o'clock in the morning passing out tracts because, because I'm not gonna put this one on you yet until the Lord tells me, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Because Taco Bell decided to stay open because after they finished drinking and partying, they had to get something really to eat. So Taco Bell was making money out of that. My second point is that there we can call upon the name of the Lord. There is power in calling upon his name. There is power regardless. You ought to try it sometime. You ought to try just, just a test. Sometimes when you're worried and, and your mind can't bring itself clear to itself, just plead the blood of Jesus. My, my Aunt Ida, and my grandmother, Rosa, they used to always plead the blood of Jesus and say to the Lord, rebuke you all over the place. They would do it quick. They would rebuke the devil quickly. Words matter. And when you're in trouble, call on the name of Jesus. There is power in that name. One songwriter wrote, said, at, at that name, demons tremble. At the sound of that name. Mm, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Let's, let's do an auto check. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. At the sound of that name, demons tremble. Hallelujah. At the sound of that name, demons tremble. When you say Jesus. Oh my. Say it like you mean it. Jesus. Say it like you know it. Jesus. Say it like you know him. Jesus. Oh Lord, hallelujah. When we call on the name of the Lord, he begins to move, hallelujah. He begins to open closed doors. He began to make things happen that wouldn't ordinarily happen. But because I called on the name of the Lord, Jesus. Jesus. 
There is power in that name. There is healing in that name. There is joy in that name. I was thinking about we were at the doctor's on the other day. Hallelujah. We were at the doctor's on the other day. And the neurologist said, well, we're going to look at this situation after we made adjustments. And then she said, well, sometimes infirmities won't reverse themselves. And I said, yeah, you're right. Then she looked at me and she says, but we believe that they're going to reverse themselves. She said it may take a week, may take two weeks, a month, and even a year. And I began to think about what she said. Because when my wife was first diagnosed, she had a blood condition. And she was in the hospital in Roanoke, Virginia. And the doctor told her that you're going to have to take two shots a week for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. And when she was in rehab, the nurses would come and give her the shot. Then she would have to go to the hospital to get the shots because her level of vitamin B was so bad that it was like a person starving from a third world country. And then after a while, they said, well, we're going to put you on the sublingual version of the B12. She was sitting in, uh, uh, hallelujah, a cancer oncology room where there were, the people that were around her were getting chemotherapy for cancer. Hallelujah. One of the ladies that we worked with for years was in that same chemotherapy room. She died four years ago. Hallelujah. And they said, you will have to take this shot every two weeks or every week from the, for the rest of your life. And then it went to the sublingual pill that you get, the vitamin that you take. And about a year ago, they took her B level, B12 levels. And they said, you're going to have to stop taking the B12 and slow down because it's too high in your system. What happened here, let me explain. When they told her that the situation wasn't going to reverse itself, I remember the scripture that says, many are the affliction <laughs> of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Covered in the blood when you call upon that name. Jesus, my rose of Sharon. Jesus, my lily of the valley. Jesus, my hope all day. Jesus, my situation breaker. Jesus, my help. Hallelujah. When you call on the name of the Lord, it elevates your morale. <laughs> you ever been on a job where the morale was low? Hallelujah. It elevates your morale. That's the scripture that says the joy of the Lord is my strength. So it doesn't matter what I'm in. God will give me strength. Psalms 50 and 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. James 4, 7, and 8 says, Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, wash your own hands. Hallelujah. Ye sinner, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded, wash your own hands. Hallelujah. Wash your own feet. Be careful what you touch with your hands. Your eye hands, your heart hands, your mind hands, your environmental hands. Watch where you go. Watch where your feet step on. 
watch the places that you watch. Listen to what's coming, going on in your mind. Don't let everything come on in your mind. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Draw nigh to God, and he will show you some things. He will show you what you need to be involved in. He will show you what you don't need to be involved in. And if you don't have the strength to get out of the buckle that you're in, just ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and heal you. He is able, hallelujah, and he will carry you through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Going through does not mean you won't be touched. Going through does not mean that you won't be tempted. Going through does not mean that you won't fall every now and then, but he will lift you up if you learn how to call on the name of Jesus. If you are humble enough to open up your mouth, depart your lips, let the sound come out, and say it until you mean it. Jesus. Finally, we are empowered by the Holy Ghost. We are powered by the Holy Spirit. Keep on drawing nigh to him. Keep your personal devotion. Keep your collective devotion. There was a specific time for prayer, for service back in the old day. And Peter and John were on their way to the temple to pray. And there was a man at the gate, hallelujah, asking for alms. But they, the thing I like about it is that they were on their way to church at church time. Hallelujah. If I'm going to run the 440 meter relay for breast cancer, hallelujah, I'm going to get there after church is over. <laughs> because of my relationship with God, I got to worship him. This is the first day of the week. He brought me through many dangers seen and unseen all week long. And I'm going to show up today on the Lord's day to worship him. And I'll tell my colleagues that I'll run with you a little bit later on. Y'all just keep the race going until I get there because I'm going to church. And I'm not ashamed to tell anybody that I go to church on Sunday. What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you, world? You do you. So why you have a problem with me doing me? Hallelujah. I, I used to tell my wife, I said, the devil rises when th certain things happen. And when I used to take off and I said, I'm going for a church meet, you always go on to church. You know what I did? The, the lady, one of the ladies there talked to me. She said, you don't have to tell, really tell them what you're going to do. Because they upset because you, you a church boy. You want to take time off to go to various conventions and do certain things. You know, people take time off to go on a cruise. <laughs> they take time off to go on vacation. I can take time off for what I want to take our time off for. Lord have mercy. But if it bothers you, then I'm going to be discreet. And, and, and wise in how I deal with the situation. Because they're they not counting your money, but they're counting your time. Hallelujah. And your money. Lord have mercy. I think honey said, and your money. <laughs> Was that honey? Was that Pookie that said that? Lord have mercy, Jesus. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. I want to give God my best. I'm, I'm almost finished, y'all. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Hallelujah. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of righteousness and the spirit of truth. It will tell you what to do. Hallelujah. People often compliment me, and I can't take the credit for it because I asked the Lord for the answer. He gave me the answer. I shared it. I said, it's he, he did it. <laughs> it won't me. Hallelujah. Sitting in the boardroom on the sixth floor uh, uh, on Park Avenue in Bramerton. Some of y'all know where that is. In the boardroom. 
with the president of the university. Hallelujah. At the time, no degree, but the Holy Ghost was in the room. And every time we had an issue that had to be dealt with, and God gave me an answer, they said, Mr. McNair, that's a good answer. Where'd you get that from? The football players do it all the time, but I don't know if they really mean it. <laughs> I wish the Miami Dolphins would do it more. <laughs> Amen. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. John 1, John, 1 John 4 and 6 says, we are of God. Hallelujah. Let me say that slow. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know ye the spirit of truth and is not the spirit of error. There is power in God's spirit. Power to do what you need to do. Power to represent him. Power to know that God is God and beside thee there is none other. There is faith in God's power. There is power in God's power. There is knowledge in our, in our knowing that God's power is empowering us. God knows your name. Hallelujah. Because you love him. God has your number. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are covered completely by God. You have an opportunity to drive down the road of life and not have to endure some of these things. There will be hardship in some places in your life because God wants you to go through a thing so that you can have that testimony from a thing. He wanted it so bad, hallelujah, that he and Jesus made up in their minds that no longer would there be a scapegoat. Hallelujah. I heard a preacher say on yesterday, Lord have mercy, that God stopped dying long enough to save a soul on the cross. <laughs> he stopped dying long enough because his father gave him an assignment and even when he was dying, he said, wait a minute, God, wait a minute. I know I give up my life, but wait just a minute because there's a thief on my side that's saying he want to go where I'm going. I'm already dying. Why do you want to go where I'm going? And Jesus said, this day shall you be with me in paradise. Although he decided to die, although he decided to give up the ghost, although he decided to just drop his head and allow the blood to be flowing from his body, blood and water and suffering and pain, he made up his, his mind before the foundation of the world, hallelujah, that he was going to die for our sins. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost was there on that day. But the Holy Ghost got quiet. The Father didn't say a word. And that's why Jesus said, Eli, Eli, my life, the botany. Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Just the flesh talking, hallelujah. But sometimes when your flesh is talking, tell your flesh to be quiet because I'm getting ready to be blessed. Lord, have mercy. And on that cross, in the middle of the day, Jesus died. He was buried in a borrowed grave. He borrowed it because you heard it before. He was not going to stay there. Hallelujah. He didn't even have to rent the grave. Lord have mercy. There are some coffins that you can rent. Hallelujah. You can go to the cemetery or the uh, funeral home and rent some flowers. But after the funeral is over, the flowers go back 
and the coffin goes back. But Jesus went to a borrowed grave because somebody was generous enough to say that you could put our Lord in this tomb. Lord have mercy. But three days later, he rose again. Three days later, somebody found him walking up and down Damascus Road. Three days later, after that time, somebody found him appearing in rooms with the disciples. A few days later, they were out by the sea because they went back to their old, their old ways because Jesus was no longer there. The fishermen went back to fishing, hallelujah. The birds went back to perping, curping. The cows kept on mooing. But while they were there on the sea, being frustrated, my Jesus showed up. And he said, toss to the other side of the water. Lord have mercy. And when they put it on the water, the fish came. Jesus took them to shore and had a catering session. And he began to tell them, spoke to John, told John, if you love me, feed my sheep. John, if you love me, don't worry about the fancy suits and the high price shoes, but feed my sheep. Do more than just preach to them. Do more than just give them a recitation or a cliche, hallelujah, but give them the unadulterated word of the Lord. Feed them. And then he went to the mountain of transfiguration and he went up into the sky he told his disciples uh, to go to Jerusalem and stay there until ye be endured with power from on high. And they did. And God filled them, baptized them inside out uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you want to be free, uh, if you want to get rid of that attitude, uh, if you want to get rid of that cursing and swearing, if you want to get rid of those drugs, hallelujah, if you want to get rid of that adultery and that fornication, allow the Holy Spirit to move on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is faithful. He is faithful. Let us all stand. And because he's faithful, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The reason why we serve him collectively because the scripture tells us, oh magnify the Lord with me. I encourage you on this Lord's day to find a church home and to consistently and faithfully serve the Lord and worship God on this worship day. God has asked us to go out into the hedges and the highways and to compel them to come, compel them to come to the house of the Lord. Let God watch us serving him 2,000 years after his son died for our sins. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. So today, thank you for coming. Thank you for letting me come into your living rooms, your kitchen, your cell phone, your television. Thank you. May the peace of God give you strength and power to draw closer to him every day and may you become a greater witness than you've ever been because he asks us to occupy until he comes. So today, we give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. We expect him any time. Our hearts await to see his blessed face to see his blessed face. 
Hallelujah. Somebody said, and we expect you. We expect you in any time. God saved me when I was nine years old at Mason Memorial Church in the afternoon in a vacation Bible school. I'll never forget it. Oh, glory. Glory to your name. I said, God, is it that easy? He said, yes, it's that easy. All you have to do is receive me in your heart. And I felt the agent, the spirit of the Holy Ghost, confirming my spirit that I had given my life to God. My brothers and my sisters, once you give your life to God, your eternity starts right then. Hallelujah. Do it today. Don't delay. Give your heart to the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your joy that fills our souls. We thank you for your precious anointing and your power. We thank you for this opportunity to share the word of God with your people. Not just here at Better Life, but all over this land, as far as YouTube can go. Hallelujah. God, I pray that the astronauts that are in space will get this broadcast. Hallelujah. And be blessed by it. I pray that people everywhere I pray that those that are here would recognize that God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. And we love him today. God, I thank you for the souls that are here. Remind them that you are faithful. Let them feast off of their testimonies of their paths, looking forward to new testimonies to be published in their lives. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So today, you heard the word of God. And you want to be saved. If you're here now, you can give your life to the Lord now. Hallelujah. Just come. In the viewing audience, you can come still. We'll send the word. If you repeat after me, we can do it right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you for the word that has been spoken. Forgive me for my sins. Make my life anew. I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. I speak these words by faith and in my prayer, I say, God, I'm godly sorry. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for this new life. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord has saved your soul. Then find your church home so that you can grow a Bible-believing, a Bible-teaching church. Hallelujah. So that you can grow until Jesus comes. He wants to make a disciple out of you. David said it when he sinned. He said, I will turn and I will talk to the transgressors and tell them, don't, don't do what I did. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord for you. So today we thank God for everyone under the sound of my voice. Thank you for being a witness. And until the next time, my prayer for you is that you would experience a better life.